What if I told you a six-figure salary is simply not worth it? You're trading most of your time for a figure that doesn't even add up to being that much after taxes. You're slaving away in order to make somebody else rich and you're just a cog in the machine doing the same thing day in, day out and not growing as a person. Well, that's why I felt anyway, so I quit my job and I started my own business. And now nine months later, I've quadrupled my income doing what I love. By the end of the video, I will show you the five steps that took me from an employee to a successful business owner now and how you can do the same exact thing step by step. Let's talk about a major issue that many software engineers face today. It's about constantly switching jobs every two to three years for better pay and promotions. This lack of loyalty isn't rewarding and the never ending cycle of job changes can leave you feeling very burnt out. And to get out of this cycle, you need a long term plan. And that's where starting your own business actually comes in. Let us consider what these remarkable milestones actually have in common. Alexander the Great conquered half the known world by the age of 23. The Wright brothers transformed the dream of flight into reality. Neil Armstrong left humanity's first footprints on the moon. And last but not least, Roger Bannister broke the four minute barrier in the mile run. All these things, all these achievements have just one thing in common. They were all thought to be impossible by both scientific and non-scientific minds. Despite the countless objections these individuals faced and what reality was telling them, they reshaped the entire world strictly with their conviction. They made the impossible possible. And if you don't think you can do the same exact thing, if you think this does not sound feasible at all, then you are already on step one of the five steps, beliefs. The reason beliefs are so important is due to the input and output formula. Your output is strictly controlled by what you input and your input is strictly controlled by your beliefs. The reason why you will avoid doing things you do not believe in is, well, for exactly that. Likewise, if you believe you cannot make a significant amount of money, then you will live a life reflecting that. Now, contrary to popular belief, to actually begin forming a powerful belief system, we first have to start by comparing ourselves to others. Think back to the time you wanted to get into programming. You most likely knew that software engineers were paid quite well and had certain expectations. Expectations that once you graduate, you would get a job and you would be making more than your peers. Due to your beliefs, you ended up completing or are currently on the path of completing a four-year degree, applying to numerous jobs and possibly getting a job. You saw the level of success that other software engineers were having and you set a baseline. And now based on your own personal skills, you place yourself either slightly above or below that baseline. With the tech market being what it is right now, since expectations have drastically fallen with regards to getting a job, well, getting a job is really hard or even near impossible nowadays, especially in software engineering. Up until this point, the things you've seen experienced have all been shaped by what you believe. Starting now, we will be working on changing that. For you to actually start a profitable business or go into any successful venture and have everything that you actually want, you need to do a thorough analysis of who you were, who you currently are, and who you wish to become. The importance of this is to identify the beliefs that hold you back. In the near future, you will most likely look back at the current version of you and cringe on a few things. Then that's a sign you've grown. This is because your future should be a hero. They have everything you want. They are the ideal version of you. To become your future self, you need to do as your future self would do. I wanted my future self to be strong, reliable, wealthy, and to truly have it all. There was no room for cowardice in my future self. When I was contemplating on whether or not I could be actually making a decent sum of money, in my case it was $50,000 a month, I thought of the man I wanted to be and I made the decision that the man I wanted to be would be sure of himself and he would not be a coward. He would be courageous and optimistic to take on new challenges that life throws at him. I want you to get a piece of pen and paper and write who the hero version of you is. How much money does he have? What does he wear? How fit is he? How spiritual is he? What does he absolutely absolutely abhor. How do people treat him? How does he treat other people? Does he command respect when he enters a room? Construct your hero and begin living by his standards. Once you have a hero and a set of beliefs that will propel you forward, you need to choose the right vehicle that will actually take you to your destination. This is where step two comes in, choosing your business model. As software engineers, we might be inclined to think that SaaS or a tech startup is really our only option. However, if that does not align with who we want to become, then it would be more beneficial for us to create our own footsteps rather than follow in others. In my case, I use my IT knowledge as a software engineer in a non-IT space to gain an edge over others. I have a consulting firm in which I build ML and AI models to actually analyze data. And in due time, should I actually in the future decide to tackle SaaS, get into SaaS, I will have a much better arsenal of weapons to take on the competition with. To properly choose your business model, you need to understand your strengths, weaknesses, and where you exactly want to be 10 to 15 years from now. You see, 
Your strengths will give you the 10x tasks you have to perform on the business you start, meaning the most leveraged tasks. While your weakness, you will have to continuously improve on through iteration, studying, failing, and just seeking a mentor. If you are striving to become the world's wealthiest man with a private jet and private islands, then tech will be a good choice. However, if you are simply aiming to be making a few million dollars a year and living your life financially free with your family, then you could very well accomplish that without having to get into tech and just going into a plethora of other businesses. Depending on what your strengths are, some business models will be inherently easier for you to start and actually make more progress in. To give you an example, I initially made my first few thousands of dollars with e-commerce. While I had to learn a lot of marketing, copy, and other skills, I was inherently good at creating websites with good performance and just conversion rate in general. This allowed me to make about $2,500 of revenue a day. I ended up later losing a lot of that money due to supplier issues and such, which leads me to my third step, having a bias for action, but always thinking twice. You see, money loves speed. Opportunities come and go and you have to be adept enough to actually react and catch it. Business works the same exact way. The sooner you act, the better it is. Whatever business you decide to pursue, do everything as soon as possible. Have bias for action. I do not mean rush it, but rather dedicate enough time to get it out as fast as possible. That being said, don't make the same mistake that I did. Always remember to think twice about what you are doing. Ask yourself two questions about any decision you make. How will this impact me in the short term? And number two, how will this impact me in the long term? Speed is of essence in business. Sometimes to find a winning idea, winning copy, winning email, or winning anything really, you have to test tens if not hundreds of ideas first. Hence, the quicker you act and iterate, the faster you can actually get there. You will for sure be experiencing many emotions during this journey, many ups and downs, but step four will allow you to actually continue on ahead. Stress is a given in every single business. Some will be a lot more stressful than others. And step four is there is such a thing as an optimal amount of stress and it is not zero. Not stressing about your business at all will mean one of two things. A, either you don't care about it anymore or B, you're overlooking something extremely major and are about to pay the price. And similarly to how when you take care of a loved one, you stress over their well-being and business is in general the same way. Learning how to properly manage stress and shortcomings in general is extremely important and actually quite simple. Hence why once you understand that there is such a thing as an optimal amount of stress and it is not zero, you will not look at it pessimistically. Once you have the solid foundations built with regards to beliefs, choosing the correct business model, having a bias for action, but always thinking twice about your moves, and understanding that the optimal amount of stress is not zero, then all that is left is what I call the bliss outreach, which marks our fifth and last step. Think about the future you. Do they approach the girl they saw at the supermarket? Are they sociable in a group environment? Do they introduce themselves to everyone there? Or do they lurk in the shadows, potentially missing out on a major business opportunity? You have to think about these things because for us to understand step five, we first had to understand that there is no such thing as luck, only probabilities. Catching a thousand X pump, whether it's a crypto or NFT pump, or any other lucrative investment opportunity, these are all bits of information that can bring you an absurd amount of return, often referred to as leverage. In order for you to get lucky as many times as possible and experience such realities, you have to place yourself in the correct situations to acquire this information. In my opinion, the best way to do that is by using the Blitz Outreach Tactic. But what actually is a Blitz Outreach Tactic? Well, let's think of a scenario. A gunman has held your family and everybody you ever care about hostage and has given you the task of delivering a package to a certain individual. To what lengths will you go to find that person? Who will you reach out to? Who will you befriend on your journey? If you imagine the individual as your client and the package as your offer, you can apply the same exact mentality. It's who you know that makes what you know valuable. By understanding this, you need to treat outreach as the bloodline of your business. This is true for the front end of your business as well as the back end. So whether you're looking for customers or whether you're looking to hire employees, you need to apply the Blitz Outreach strategy. But what does it specifically entail if we're gonna go through it step by step? Well, you need to make sure that whatever it is that you are offering is improving the life of your target customer. If it is, you have to make it your duty to get your offer out to as many customers as possible. You know what is best for them and they need your offer. You'll be doing them a disservice if you do not make them aware of your offer. Think of a doctor who performs an MRI, finds a tumor, 
and decides not to tell the patient. You need to think that you will be doing a disservice to your ideal customer if you are not letting them know of what you are currently doing and offering. That is how much conviction you need to have with your offer. Once you have this conviction, the blitz outreach tactic is actually quite simple despite the name suggests. Emails, text, calls, physical mail, loom videos, DMs, whatever. Every single method of communication you will use in the blitz outreach tactic. You will continually follow up until you receive an explicit no, stop bothering me. Make sure you do not give up on your potential customers too early. Remember, in this case, you are the doctor. Your patient has to know. You might be thinking, well, how long will it take me to follow these steps and to actually make money? Let me tell you. It took me roughly nine months once I built the necessary trust in myself and learned the skills I needed to learn to actually start making about $80,000 a month in revenue. However, it took me close to two years to learn those skills and develop that trust in myself, which is about the same time an average startup becomes profitable. Looking back now, I could have done everything in under six months if I was actually vigilant enough in my testing and thinking twice about things. However, now that you have the fundamental five steps that took me years to learn, you can get to say $50,000 a month easily in under just six months, which is why it's so important for you to follow the five steps I just showed you. Learn from my mistakes. Having the five fundamental steps prepares you to quit your nine to five to start a profitable business, but to truly understand why software engineers have an overwhelming advantage in entrepreneurship so you can actually take these massive strides towards success, you have to watch this video next. As always, thank you for watching.